fellow ink drinkers, and welcome back to the Blind Girls Book Talk podcast. My name is Aria. And I'm Belle. And we are two Legally Blind sisters who love reading and love books. And so what we've done is we've created this show in order to talk about that. We talk about a wide range of bookish topics, and that includes book-to-movie adaptation comparisons, buddy reads, recent reads, bookish challenges, really. The list does go on and on. And today we are doing a book-to-movie comparison for one of Roald Dahl's classic stories, the BFG. Now, when I was little, I adored this book. Like, I didn't read a whole lot of Roald Dahl's other stories, but for some odd reason, I read this one and it really stood out to me and I loved it as a kid. It was probably one of my favorites, I would say, at the time that I read it. And so I thought, what better than to do a book-to-movie comparison of this because I knew there had been a movie that had had come out and I hadn't seen it. And I was like, plus it's a little bit of a nostalgia read also all wrapped together. So that's what we're doing today. And so right now I'm just going to say spoilers. If you really want to read this book, it is cute. I definitely have... I think outgrown it, obviously, because when I was reading it, I was just kind of like, what, what, why did I like this? Why, why was this the thing that I really enjoyed? But, you know, it is a cute story if you want to read it. But otherwise, we're going to be spoiling everything about everything related to both the book and the Disney movie. So... That being said, I'm just going to get right into it. So the book itself is about a little girl named Sophie, who one day she is awake in the middle of the night. She sees kind of a figure and the figure comes. It's like this gigantic figure. It kind of takes her and goes running. And you find out that the thing that took her is a giant. He is the big friendly giant He kind of is just like, yeah, I can't let human beings see me. So um, you're with me now. (laughs) And yeah, they pretty much she learns about the world of giants, pretty much all the other giants. There's like nine of them. They go and they eat people like every night. And the big friendly giant is different. He goes and he gives dreams to children. Essentially, he has like a special trumpet. And he can hear the dreams and he can catch them. That's what he does. And pretty much the way kind of the story ends is that Sophie is just like, we can't let the giants keep eating people. So she convinces the BFG to make a dream for the Queen of England that pretty much tells her that giants are are real and they're eating people and you know, she needs to do something about it. The BFG will help. And Sophie is going to be like sitting in her window waiting to talk to her. Sophie's sitting in the window. The queen dreams. She wakes up. She sees Sophie. And then they go after the giants. They throw them in like a really deep pit. And they give them the, I think it's like schnoz cumbers or something like that. That the BFG, it was the only thing that he ate so that's all they gave the giants to eat and the bfg and sophie live happily ever after is pretty much how the story goes is it like i said it's a very cute little story i don't know why i was so enamored with it as a kid but i was i mean my raw doll story that i was in love with is a lot worse than that one so which one were you the witches oh that's right you were (laughs) enamored with the witches it is a weird story yeah it's worse yeah so 
now we kind of get to the movie part. I want to kind of go over one of my overall thoughts because, I mean, I feel like this sums the whole everything I have to say up about it, but I'm still going to talk about it. And that is if this movie had came out when I was a kid and I hadn't yet read the book, I would have loved that movie. Like little me would have adored this. Even with reading the book, I think I still would have loved this movie. I forget. I know it was sometime in the like mid 2010s that this movie came out, I want to say. And so if I was a little kid, then I would have adored this. This would have been one of my favorites. I would have loved it. But as an adult, I was just like, what am I? What am I watching? And so some of the differences in the book, like I said at the beginning, she's just kind of happens to have woken up and is like looking out the window. And that's how it all starts in the movie. She is like lying on the stair landing at like 3 a.m. And she decides to pick up the mail that's just sitting there and locking the doors. Like, it's very, very strange. And I'm just like, what? What? <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me, what? This doesn't make any sense. And then the next thing is that when the BFG, when they get to his, like, living space, it's a lot more cabin-like where in the book it was definitely like a cave <laughs> like it was a full cave like there was no windows there was nothing in this it is definitely very much a cabin she also tries to run away in the movie and she never does that in the book like they have a very quick conversation in the book that just kind of gets her on track for everything and in the movie, that doesn't really happen. And then I think the conversation they do end up having is also, I put, this is the weirdest conversation that both follows and doesn't follow the book. And that's a lot of like the first two thirds of this movie. It follows the book, but it also doesn't in very strange ways. I understand that you have to take some licenses, especially with this one, to kind of fill out the movie. Like I can I can see where they did it and why they did it. But at the same time, it's very much like, OK, and so we're going to be changing this, this, this and this. Also, the fact that she has glasses and then the, she needs them and then doesn't is weird. So, yeah, she has glasses that she just she wears them and then like all of a sudden like she just doesn't need them and then she like wears them again and i'm just like i i don't get what you're trying to go with there because in the book she did not have them like at all so don't know what you're getting at there friendos also he has food other than schnoz cumbers which is really weird. Yeah, it makes it seem like he has other food. Like in the book, it was very much like, this is the only thing I have to eat. And maybe that's all he had to eat, but it wasn't made very clear. Like he made like a stew or something where before he would just, just eat them. Like that's all he would eat, like not make it into a stew. The fact that Sophie is just like, I have insomnia is a whole time. Yeah, at one point in time, she's just like, I have insomnia. And I'm like, that is a mood. <laughs> and that is me also. <laughs> and it's just, I, I was just like, that's that's a time. Oh, yeah. And then the BFG just has a random, like, ship in his cave, like an old timey, like almost like pirate ship in his cave. Like, it, it's just sitting in there. And that leads so many questions for me to have. Like, what, wh how, why, I do not understand. <laughs> it's just there. Like, and he has like this giant pool of water that is just floating in. And I'm just like, why not have just your own little boat? Just, just little, and like, and he can't even get on it. That's the thing, because he's it's too big. to him, then. He has a toy boat. Let, let the giant have a toy boat. Girl, I just, I have questions. Okay, so there was a dream sequence where it was like her trying to run away again from the BFG and like she runs into the other giants and the 
BFG makes her have this dream to like explain to her what's going on, like why she can't run away. But I put in my notes because I did not understand it was a dream sequence. So I was like, she never tries to run away. She and the BFG build a good rapport rather quickly in the book. So yeah, I just had questions. But after the whole dream sequence, that's when they start rapport building again. Also, why is he, why was he making a dream? Never mind. He made her a nightmare to explain. Honestly, not mad about that change. That is the note that I made. This is my thoughts. Yeah, no, I, I actually did kind of like that. Once I understood what was going on, I did think that was a neat way to do it. Like just showing like, hey, this is what's going to happen to you if you try to leave here without me. And if you try to run away, like it's not going to go well. And like it kind of helps them to build their rapport a lot better and also kind of introduces us to all the dreams that he can make and stuff like that. So I was just like, okay, like I'm not I'm not as much as that is a very big change. I am not mad about that. Oh, so apparently he brought another kid back like before and had stuff left over from the kid and in the book he never like sophie was the first person he ever brought back so i was just like um he's never done that before and why does he have so many clothes like he just has like a whole like treasure chest full of clothing items that he just kind of dumps out and is like there you go pick some clothes i'm like what what i have so many questions <laughs> Yeah, I I, ha I I can't even try for that one. So, okay. I don't understand quite how it happened in the book. I feel like he just kind of had a giant room and like towards the back of the room is where he kept like his dream stuff. In the movie, it's like he had like a waterfall like in the back of his house that he could go like pass through and then that led him to like where he kept all his dreams. And there was like a tree in the middle. Like it was like a, this whole thing that was very like it, it was very pretty. Like the visuals were very pretty. But it was just this whole like fantasy thing. And pretty much he tries to hide her in the dream part of his cave and he's just like you need to stay here and she's like no i can't the giants will find me i know they'll find me like you have to take me with you and like they have this whole thing about her being like you got to take me with you and i was just like he never he never tried to hide her at all though like and leave her like he was always like yep you're with me like you're safest with me let's let's go it'll be fine they did exchange names sooner in the book than they did in the movie. And then he takes her to where he catches dreams. And in the book, he just kind of stands there and catches some and like shows her and explains it to her. In the movie, he's like, go catch a dream for me. Like, just go do it. <laughs> and she just runs off after the dreams that are just like little like wispy lights that she just chases. And I'm just like, OK, but but no, <laughs> that that. I get why, but also that doesn't happen. Kind of clever to make a dream about her for later. Oh, because he, he caught a dream and it, he named it Sophie's Dream. And that was not in the book at all. So I did not understand what that was supposed to be. He doesn't take her dream blowing either until going to see the queen. So yeah, there's a whole thing of them going into town and him you know, doing his dream giving thing that he does and him explaining to her everything that happens. And again, it's one of those things where it's like it didn't happen in the book, but then the dream that he's explaining is one of the ones that does show up in the book. So I'm like, this is both the same and not. And I'm just going to go with it. But I do like instead of them sitting in the cave and going over the dreams, they actually show the dreams in the real world. I do like that change overall. I did end up liking that change overall. Oh, yeah. He, he kept mentioning about the person beforehand. And I was like, OK, but there was never a person beforehand. Sophie was the first person he brought back. And then at one point, it seemed like he tried to send her back. But then it was also like a dream thing, too. I don't know. I was just very confused by that part of the movie. I was just like, what, what is happening? Okay, so this might be dark. 
So you might want to skip forward a couple seconds as I go over this because my notes are, what the heck did I just watch? So this may be a bit dark, so just skip ahead a little bit. But essentially, I watched something that was not in the book where essentially Sophie is back at the orphanage and she's like, the BFG can hear me. I know he can. And I'm, you know, I want to go back with him. So she stands out on the balcony and she's like, BFG, like, I need you come here. I'm going to jump. And she jumps off the balcony and the BFG catches her out of nowhere. But <laughs> I was just like, what did I just watch? Like, that is awful. Like, that was very awful. Like, the whole way that that was framed was not great. Like, I, that was the only part of the movie that I was like, absolutely not. <laughs> After that happens, and he goes back to his home, the other giants just barge into his cave, and they're all like, I know you have a human here. We're going to find it. And they start just, like, trashing his the dream part of his cave, which never happens in the book. And I was just like, why have we deviated so far? Like, wh why? I'll admit the scene making the queen's dream and the queen discussing her dream is really good. Yeah, so that followed the book really well. And I did like that one. I mean, well, not very well. It was very, it was as close as this movie was going to get with the making the queen part or making the queen dream with the her actually dreaming that was pretty close to the book so at one point all the soldiers come out and they're like you know they're kind of like standing their ground and before he came out she was like do you promise you won't hurt him and like nobody says anything like nobody does anything and then the bfg comes out the soldiers come out and they're all like, you know, and she's like, you promised you wouldn't hurt him. And I was like, girl, nobody promised you a single thing. Nobody said a word. How can you be like, yeah, you promised when nothing happened, like nothing, nothing happened. The BFG is so cute. I do love him. Yeah, his design was really good. I thought it was really good. He, it, I think it was at the breakfast scene. He was just like cute little cinnamon roll. And I was like, oh, he's a cute character. We love him. Everybody just staring at him while he's eating. I'm going to skip that because there was a whole there was a whole thing about there was bagpipes and the special drink that the BFG makes. Yeah, the special drink that he makes that's really good. Like he gives it to everybody and they all have this weird toast. And it's just like it's it's a time. And I was just like, this is definitely the kids part of the kids movie. Why does he have to have a plan? It was her. Oh, yeah. Because at one point, Sophie's like, so what's your plan? And I was like, girl, this whole thing has been your plan. Why are you all like, what's, what's your plan? <laughs> when literally the whole whole thing has been your plan the whole thing like you have been running this show what are you talking about also the nightmare to the giants happens at a really weird time so yeah so in the book the bfg makes the giants have a nightmare like after they picked on him essentially it's kind of like a bit of a payback in a weird way but in the movie they make them have a nightmare when they're trying to capture them which the whole thing in the book was like, we don't want them to wake up. We want them to be just like passed out and sleeping. So that way we can just capture them really quickly and take them to where we need to take them. So, yeah, it was just a very weird time. I didn't get why they had to do that. And then, yeah, Sophie asks him about the bottle that says Sophie's dream and he explains it to her. And it's just a very strange conversation that's like out of nowhere, in my opinion. Like, it does not make sense. It never happens in the book. It's just a really weird discussion. After that, she gets caught by the giants, which never happens in the book. Also, this nightmare is so weird. I don't even remember what that nightmare was, but it was apparently very strange. And then... So instead of throwing the giants in the pit in a pit, they throw the giants on an island. And I was just like, 
Why? Because they can get off that. Like they can run really fast. Like that's a whole thing that they can do. So on the stand, at least the, I was like, at least the giant pit that they threw them in made more sense because they couldn't really climb out of the pit. Like throwing them on an island makes no sense. None of the sense. At the end, the queen's assistant ended up adopting Sophie. And I said, I did like that. I thought that was cute. It gave it very much Matilda vibes. But I don't like that the BFG doesn't seem to see her anymore. The book had a better ending of him being a part of society. Yeah, that ending was kind of not good, in my opinion. So the last overall thought was essentially it did a pretty decent job as an adaptation, but it also really changed a lot of things. And a lot of things were just very, very strange. So yeah, I was very torn on this movie. I was like, I would have loved this as a kid, but I just don't understand a lot of what they did. Like it did not make sense. And I was just like, okay, well, this is my life now. Well, I think I've talked about all that I can about this. You've been very quiet today. I'm zen. You are zen. I'm zen. I'm calm. Yes. I'm zen. You are zen. So that being said, we want to thank you for coming along today as I discussed the BFG book to movie comparison. Of course, if you like this episode, if you like what you've been listening to, please consider following the podcast and sharing the episode with your friends. It really would help us to grow the show and we would appreciate the support those actions would give. And now, what are we going to be talking about next time? Arya's fictional men tier list. Oh, that's great. All right. So we will see you guys next time then. Bye. Bye.